Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about the seismic instruments. So seismic instruments are basically the instruments that help in measuring the vibrations and these instruments they have got the spring, mass and dashboard type of the system to measure the vibrations. If you look at this diagram, we have got a mass and this mass is placed inside a cage and it is also connected to a spring and a damper, right? And this whole system, this caged whole system is connected to the surface of the vibrating unit or the vibrating element, right? And because of the vibration of the base, what exactly happens? The vibration is transferred to the mass. So the mass, it vibrates, right? So the movement or the vibration of this mass, there are various ways of measuring the movement of the mass through, it can be done with the help of scale. But this is not a very good uh, method of measuring the vibration. So the electromagnetic methods can also be used to measure the vibrations of the system. Now here we see the mass that is connected to the spring with spring stiffness K and a damper with the damping coefficient C and the damper and the spring they are connected directly to the cage which is in contact with the vibrating body, right? So the motion or the displacement that this vibrating body is vibrating with some velocity with some sorry displacement with which we are denoting by Y. So this is y cos omega t, right? And this mass, what happens because of the vibration of this base, the mass also vibrates, right? But the uh, vibration of mass we are denoting by, let's say, x is a function of t. So what exactly happening? The relative displacement is taking place in the body, in this mass. So let's say that the relative displacement we are denoting by z, which is x minus y. Because the direction of movement of the base, right, or the cage and the mass, it is in the same direction. So when this cage is moving upwards, the mass is also moving upwards. But because of the damper, what is happening? The displacement is different. Because of the spring and damper, the displacement is different. So we are talking about the relative displacement, therefore be denoted by x minus y. So if we see on the mass, if we draw the free body diagram, we see what is the spring uh, force acting on the body and the damping force. So damping force is C x dot minus y dot because the relative velocity is there. And the spring force is K x minus y because the relative displacement is there, right? So the total force acting on the body, we can write it in terms of this, which is mass into acceleration. So which is so the if the body is going in the upward direction right for one part of the cycle if the body in vibration if body is going upward so m x double dot is equal to minus c x dot minus y dot minus k into x minus y so in this equation if we subtract minus m y dot on both hands it won't make any change to the equation and in, if in this factor we take m common, so it becomes what x double dot minus y double dot. So if z is x minus y, z dot will be equal to x dot minus y dot and z double dot will be equal to x double dot minus y double dot. So it can be replaced with m z double dot, right? And x dot minus y dot becomes z dot, x minus y becomes z. So this is the equation that we get. So if we take all the factors of z on one hand, so what we get is m y double dot and the motion of this vibrating body or we see the motion of the base of this cage, it is in some simple harmonic motion. So we can say that y double dot can be given as omega square y cos omega t, right? So from where are we getting this equation? See, what is y? We said that displacement is given by some function which is y cos omega t. So y dot will be minus omega y sine omega t and y double dot will be what? So sine is cos and it will be negative sine only omega square y cos omega t and already with this factor there was some negative sign. So with negative negative it becomes positive. So we get this equation. 
now because this is the case of the forced damped vibration system so for the steady state solution we get the solution in this form which is z which is the function of time is equal to the maximum amplitude which is z sin omega t minus phi where phi is showing the phase lag between x and y right so we can write this equation the steady state solution for this equation can be written as z in terms of y omega square k minus m omega square whole square plus c square omega square 1 by 2 right and in this the ratio of the angular velocity upon the sorry the ratio of this uh, frequency of oscillation upon the natural frequency it is denoted by small r and the damping factor which is zeta it is denoted by c upon 2m omega n so this is in case of the damping systems we have already discussed so we can also write this equation in this form and the angle phi which is showing the lag phase lag it can be denoted by the factors this which is the sin upon cos factor so this is c c upon omega upon k minus m omega square so and we can also write it in terms of r and zeta so it becomes 10 inverse 2 zeta r upon 1 minus r square so we try to plot a graph between z and y so you have already seen the equation for z so if we divide z and y and we plot a graph between z upon y and omega upon omega n so this is the range of the vibrometers and accelerometers so these are the types of the seismic instruments we get and we see that the range of vibrometer is when omega upon omega n is equal to or greater than 3 so it is in the range of 3 is to 5 and accelerometer it is in the range 0 to 1 and you can also see in this case that for vibrometers the ratio z upon y is almost equal to 1 you know it's it's almost same range whereas in case of accelerometers z upon y it is varying from 0 to value 4 right and this is the damping factor for different damping factors we can plot the graph in another video we'll discuss what are vibrometers and accelerometers